World Adventures Club meets again. Its members, men from every walk of life, adventurers all, have one thing in common, courage. At each meeting, one of their number tells of his strangest adventure. They all seem in good humor. That is, all but one. A dark, moody man whose face is new to the club. Let us hear where the trail of adventures led this newest member of the World's Adventures Club. Quiet, please. Thank you. I am pleased to see you in good spirits tonight, my friends. We must make a good impression on our new member. A newcomer, eh? Fine. That means a new adventure tale, a new thrill. Yes, yes. Gloomy, though. Where is he from? Yes. That he's been through plenty. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, don't let your imaginations run away with you. Suppose we extend the hand of fellowship to Mr. Harvey Clark and allow him to tell his own story. Hi. Let's hear it, Mr. Clark. Glad to have you here. I wonder, gentlemen, I wonder if you'll be glad to extend the hand of fellowship to a murderer. What? What? Are you joking, of course. No, I'm not joking, gentlemen. I have come here as a criminal. You are my jury. I came because you are men who have learned to think quick and straight. You will not temper justice with court law or legal red tape. You have all stared death in the face at some time or other, or worse than death. Listen, and then judge me. Judge me as fairly as if we were in the midst of a Central American jungle, as Jackson and I were two years ago. We had been engineering in the interior. Jackson had a bad attack of fever, and as soon as he was able to travel, we started for the coast and a furlough home. It was new country to us, necessity for speed, forced us to travel light. Our only trail was a gloomy jungle stream, which our camp boys told us led to the coast. It had been terrific work breaking through the brush, but suddenly we came to a clearing, dark and foreboding, a jungle vacuum, yet alive with jungle mystery. <laughs> hmm. Pleasant little spot. Reminds me of the morgue at home. Without the bodies, of course. <laughs> the fever hasn't drained your irony, Jackson. Sit down and rest a bit while I take a look around. No, don't go out of sight, Harvey. This place gives me the creeps. I feel like we're being watched. Even the trees seem alive. What's that? Where? Oh, <laughs> oh those big monkeys. Good Lord, man, the fever has made you jumpy. Now, take it easy. We'll soon reach the coast, and then the first steamer home. Oh, boy, will I be glad to get there. What are you looking at, Harvey? I thought this coast was a tree stump at first. The pines fooled me. See? It's been made by human hands. Hmm. And what's this carving on it? Why, man, it's an altar. Altar, eh? Probably belongs to the Indians who worship the crocodiles. It's used by savages, all right, but they don't worship crocodiles. <laughs> well, there's a wide variety of wildlife to choose from down here. What do they worship, Professor Jackson? Cannibal ants. Oh, oh, come now. You're joking. I was never more serious in my life. Remember that book about native tribes that I was reading in camp before I had the fever? Do I? I think that's what gave you the fever. That book hinted of a tribe of unknown savages. They had only been glimpsed by white men, but their sacrificial altars had been found in the trail of the cannibal ants. Monstrous insects. Vast armies of them. Well, these ants had been purposely drawn to the altars. 
And there they attack the victims, bound to these altars, and pick their bones clean. Yes, yes, omit the gory details. I know all about those murderous things. And I've seen what happens to any living creature that gets in their path. A man can't even walk across their line of march and survive. But as far as imagining this... It isn't and... imagination, Harvey. This altar resembles those described in the book. The carvings identify it. Now, see here, Jackson. This place is getting on your nerves. Let's be moving. Listen. Tom-toms. Strange. It must be near a native village. The drums are growing louder. They're all around us. Oh, come now. You'll have me believing your crazy tale. The monkeys. Up in the trees. What are they looking at? Now, pull yourself together, man. Some tribe is probably trying to drive the devils out of the bush. You know the language of the tom-toms, Harvey. Does that sound like the devil drums? Well, no. But hang it on, man. You mustn't let this thing... It's the cannibal worshippers. It's too late to escape now, Harvey. I warned you. Ugly-looking devils, whoever they are. I don't recognize their tribe, either. Good God. What can we do? Now, don't show any fear. Perhaps they are merely curious. At least they haven't made an unfriendly move as yet. I'll raise the hand of friendship and see if they understand. Um, God, um. Don't move, Harvey. A blowpipe dart in the trees behind you. Phew. Well, thanks, old man. Funny they'd try a thing like that since we're armed. Evidently, they've never seen a gun. Don't you know what that proves, Harvey? Well, we know that they are not friendly at any rate. They're the cannibal ant worshippers, man. Those pieces of raw meat they're carrying, they'll use them to attract the ants here. Then go for your gun, Jackson. We'll shoot our way out. No, no you devils, no! It's too late to use my gun, Harvey. They've got me. Keep your nerve up, Jackson. I'll start shooting if I can shake these black rats off for a second. Where are you taking me, you fiends? Let me go, let me go! They're saving you, Harvey. They lose too much pleasure. Killing us both at once. Oh, Harvey, don't let them tie me here. Don't leave me here alone. Don't give up, old man. If I can only reach my gun. Oh, they are using the raw meat. I must get to him. Oh, God help me. The ants must be near here, Harvey. These savages must have been stalking us for hours. They've got us where they want us now. I'll stop them somehow. I've got to stop them. They must be almost here. Listen, Harvey. I'm done for. Jackson, old boy, but don't give up. One way you can help me now. Listen carefully. Yes, we've been through a lot together, haven't we? Yes, but we'd kill for one another, wouldn't we? You bet we would. Then, Harvey, fall back as if you're through. When the ant army appears on the edge of the clearing, these savages will be concentrating on me. You can jerk loose and shoot, man, shoot quick and straight. You mean... I mean, I'm asking you to release me from a horrible death. My God, Jackson, you're asking me to murder my best friend. They're coming, Harvey. Promise me. I can't, man, I can't. Oh, be merciful, you do that for a dog in a path, you'd... Uh, look, Harvey, the edge of the clearing, the cannibal ants. For God's sake, pal, for all that you love, shoot! Ants, millions of them, filling the clearing, covering the meat. They'll swarm over Jackson. Let me go, you devil! Let me go! Let me go! Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. didn't mean to. But it was a good shot, wasn't it? That black devil was right in line with you. I meant the bullet for him. But you're free now. Free as you asked to be. Great Scott, Clark. I wonder that you retained your sanity after such a horrible experience. How did you escape the savage? Yes, yes. How, did how did you, you escape from the what? The shock of knowing that I had killed Jackson drove me completely mad. And I fainted after glimpsing my friend. 
covered with a living shroud of animal ants. Take it easy, old man. When I recovered my sanity, I learned that a passing trader and his men had rescued me. They had heard the tom-toms and had started for them, thinking it a native celebration. My shots brought them on the run and they took me to the coast. Later, they returned to that clearing with government soldiers, hoping to find the savages in the vicinity. But they had no luck. I don't think they ever will. Meanwhile, Jackson's death haunts me day and night. Mr. Clark, you should have nothing on your conscience. You killed your friend by accident. But in so doing, you obeyed a wilderness law. You rescued him. Well, if that is your verdict, gentlemen, then you've given me new life. Something greater than I must have directed the shot that killed Jackson. In reality, I rescued him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We've done the same. Yeah. 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 I've never sailed the Amazon. I never reached Brazil. But the Don and the Magdalena, they can go there when they will. So the mysterious stranger has unburdened his heart to his kind and found solace. For these men have seen the worst and come out the best. Don't forget that you're always a welcome guest to hear of their strange adventures in strange lands. <laughs>